local hobby store, runs Magic the Gathering, tabletop and pen and paper RPGs. New game posted up on the store's board. Know the DM, so sign up. Five of us in total, plus DM. Everyone knows everyone. Unfortunately, we get that guy and a Mary Sue we can't say no to because they know the owners. Our DM is a goth chick. Instantly, that guy feels the need to offer his advice on running a game because she clearly needs help. Goth Chick has been running and playing Call of Cthulhu since high school. Goth Chick announces she is running her own homebrew horror game along the lines of Event Horizon slash Doom. Her words. Once again, that guy tries to offer her advice that horror games don't work well. Mary Sue doesn't look happy as it's clear this game won't have many times to shine. Goth Chick calmly says that if that guy thinks that game won't work out, then he's free to leave. That guy gets angry and ends up saying something along the lines of he will stay in the game to make sure she doesn't do anything wrong. Goth Chick ignores him and just covers the basics of the system we will be using, etc. And we plan to meet up at her house to help with the atmosphere. A crowded game store doesn't exactly convey tension and dread. Goth Chick helps us write up our characters. Basically a salvage crew. Who are trying to salvage your wreckage from an old space battle orbiting a large gas giant. A week later we arrive at Goth's house to go to her basement which is actually rather spooky. Only lights in the table are a lantern and her laptop with music and sound cues. She gives us the setting. Ancient space battle took place. Wreckage is valuable but people believe it to be cursed. Our salvage team is nearly broke and hopes to make some money from salvaging a large wreck. Our characters are... Me, a young computer tech. Barry, an engineer specialist. John, our security. That guy, who is an atmosphere tech and also secretly the real captain. I swear, Gothchick just let him do it to shut him up. And Mary Sue even manages to make a Mary Sue, widow he salvages to make money whilst hiding from some syndicate who wants her because she is an heir to another syndicate. Once again, Gothchick probably just went fuck it. So we board the wreckage with an eerie soundtrack playing and Gothchick using a loud airlock sound effect as we enter as she describes the docking area we just entered. Despite Goth setting an eerie mood to the roleplay, that guy just shrugs it off and begins cracking jokes that seem to mock Goth Girl's style of play. Whoa, these airlocks are ancient. They sound so loud I can barely think. Why did the designer want this ship to be spooky? Despite being our atmosphere tech, He doesn't do his fucking job. So Goth Chick has to describe that despite being without power, the ship seems to have breathable air. We decide to head towards the engines to see if we can find out why the ship has breathable air, despite having no power. I should mention my character is using a portable device to provide enough power to the doors to open them. As our party progresses, we find weird stuff going on. One hallway's air smells of copper and rotten meat. Even though nothing is showing up in the atmosphere detector that guy is carrying. Which we had to fucking check. Because he's too busy ruining the fucking immersion with jabs at goth girls DMing. After a while, we arrive at the engine room where goth chick changes the track to this odd humming noise of the engine. Barry investigates the engine, but finds despite the humming noise being a clear sign of activation, the engine isn't on. In fact, it isn't even there. The internal components are missing. My character tries to access the ship's computer system and finds that power is working but we have no idea where the source is and we have no energy signatures. John looks around the engines and finds the energy power coils have a strange red hue about them. He reaches out and finds that the red hue is actually organic. Suddenly goth chick makes him take a reaction test and the organic matter spills to reveal a gaping mouth full of bones for teeth. John passes but Goth changes the track to this loud ship alert and announces in a voice worthy of Shodan. Intruders detected in engine room. Response team to engine room. To make shit even more freaky, she plays a screaming track over the alarm as the power coils all expose mouths that are screaming. Over all of this, Goth Chick says we hear a loud sound of something approaching from one of the hallways. We fucking book it with my character slamming the door behind us and locking it as something slams into it. Now we are all disturbed by this, but none more so than Mary Sue, who didn't mention she can't stand horror. Unfortunately, (sighs) that guy is still cracking jokes. 
His newest one being about John nearly having his hand bitten off by a teeth-filled vagina. Gothchick keeps her composure and continues to describe the something hammering against the door. I advise the party we move, as I have no idea if the ship's doors will open on their own. John pulls up an old schematic of the ship and finds we are in a hallway that can lead us through the dorms and back to the docking area we came in at. So we head off, the screaming and siren dying away, replaced once again by the eerie backing track. We finally enter the dorms. All the bed sheets are covered in blood that still drips and is wet despite hundreds of years passing. The sheets are hung from the ceiling like a maze, blowing in an unfelt breeze. Goth chick cues up the sound of sheets blowing in the wind. This chick actually has a shit on lock. She's fucking... She's not bad, yeah. like. None of us want to go through the blood sheet maze, but we have no choice, as the only other option is going back to the engine room. John, the only one with an actual weapon, goes in first, with Mary Sue close behind him, then me, Barry, and that guy at the rear. As we pass through the sheets, they seem to reach up and slap against us wetly leaving blood on her clothes and seeming to cling longer than they should have. Eventually John spots something moving through the sheets and catches a glimpse of something that moves like an ape but with no skin and far too many heads. John takes a sanity check and fails, leading him to entering fight or flight mode. Basically the character panics and either fights if they are cornered and runs if they can. John fires off shots frantically at the thing he saw and runs through the sheet maze walls and falls to the ground after three wrap around him. Gothchick asks him to make some rolls and hands him a note. We manage to follow John through the path of fallen sheets and peel back the sheets around him to find John is dead. Everything but his bones melting into the sheet, staining the sheets an even deeper shade of red, a mocking face like a stain caught forever in a horrific scream. So of course everyone is freaked out, except for that guy, who declares dibs in his gun, because witnessing a guy's skin melt into the sheets isn't scary at all. Mary Sue isn't looking too good. Why does a sheet? <laughs> no pun intended. No. <laughs> Goth girl actually tells her if she doesn't want to play, she can head upstairs and go do something else. Mary Sue refuses. I think she noticed we weren't happy with that guy, and she didn't want to be roped in with him. So after that guy takes John's gun, the plan hasn't changed. We are heading to the docking bay and fucking legging it. We move on, me sealing the doors behind us, cueing goth chick's airlock sound effect. We reach a branching path, so we have to bring up the ship's schematics. While doing so, we hear the door behind us tear open and something roar. I manage to get the doors open, but not before whatever tore its way through the previous door comes into view. There are two creatures, described as something put together by someone who didn't understand symmetry, and appeared to be made up of human body parts, without skin. Ew. His mouth is just a large hole with human rib bones making up the teeth. Due to some amazing rolls, we all pass our sanity checks and get through the door. Except that guy, who decides he wants to kill something. Now, by this point, Goth is sick of that guy's shit. During the morning of John, he pulled out his mobile and started playing Angry Birds. Ew, what a gay. <laughs> absolute gay boy. <laughs> So when that guy declares he is going to fight, we are all eager as it means he'll probably die. To his credit, he managed to kill one of the monsters, but it took eight rounds from his gun, and by that time, the second creature was right near us. That guy gloats when he kills the creature, and loudly declares, See, these things are easy! Except, I know something that guy doesn't. The gun only has 12 round magazine, and John fired three rounds before he died. Last bullet. I hand goth girl a note, so of course that guy goes to shit again, fires the last bullet, of course that guy is shocked to find he has no ammo left. He turns to goth chick, what the fuck, why didn't I know I only had one bullet left? Because you took the gun, you didn't bother to check the gun's magazine. Fine, I reload. You didn't pick up any ammo either, remember? You only took his gun. That's not fair. I thought you would realise me saying I took the gun would mean I took all the ammo too. No, as the ammo was in John's vest and you ignored his corpse for the gun. That guy ended up giving up his argument, thinking he was in the right. And Gothchick is just a bad DM, so he turns to run through the door. Remember the note? Yeah, I closed the door behind that guy when the creature got too close. That guy is now super pissed. 
Why did you shut the door? Two shambling monstrosities were about to get in. I shut the door to save the others. Why didn't you tell me? Oh, I thought you were doing the heroic last stand. You only went in there with nine bullets. How did you know how much ammo I had left? I saw John's character sheet and the gun's capacity is listed. That guy demands I open the door to let him in. I don't, because shambling monster behind him. <laughs> After some combat, more like goth chick trying to make that guy roll and him bitching about it, that guy dies. We don't get a gruesome description. Only the fact we can hear a horrible scream, followed by a wet, snapping noise, and then only silence. That guy stands up and leaves, but not before yelling that he is telling everyone at the store what a horrible DM goth is, and how we all suck as players. I'll skip ahead to that guy shooting himself in the foot at the store. The game continued without him, and we all died, but it was fun, and goth girl treated us to pizza for being her guinea pigs and gave Mary Sue some alcohol as she looked scared shitless. We arrive at the store next week, and find that guy has been telling everyone who would listen to how goth girl doesn't know how to GM, and how we were all terrible players, and how we all bullied Mary Sue by making her play a horror game. The store owner ends up asking about it. See, that guy did know the owners, except what he didn't say was that the owners knew how much of a poor sport he was. The store owner also asks about the bullying, but Mary Sue thankfully takes our side and says goth girl said she could leave the game if it was too nasty for her. The store owner tells that guy, loudly, that everyone in the store can hear, that he is not to spread rumours about other players just because he died in a game. After that, very few people listen to that guy, especially when goth girl became popular in the store for her horror games. That guy eventually got banned from the store for hitting another player, over a game that migrated to another store, where he spread rumours about how bad our store was. He later got kicked out of that store for lying about getting laid by one of the female workers. Oh my god. And spreading rumours about it. (laughs) Creep. Jesus Christ. So, I don't know how many of you guys are familiar with Chris Chan, you know, like Sonic Chain and all that. I like to imagine that this fella here is like a more articulate version of Chris Chan, maybe a bit more capable, maybe not as heavily autistic as Chris Chan, but gets on in a very similar way. Like, you know, the whole idea of just acting like that in someone else's house or like, you know, getting on like that in like, you know, a game store or whatever. It's so fucking embarrassing, man. I just couldn't imagine anyone that does like you would have to have something seriously wrong with you to actually behave in that manner. You know what I mean? I don't know. I just find it really disgusting. I don't know. That's the only word I've really got for it. But like, let us know what you thought down below. I would love to have a go at Goth Girls game. Like, uh, I really enjoyed Call of Cthulhu and all that. But I never, I've never actually got to play Call of Cthulhu. But it's one of those ones of like, oh man, come on, I want to give it a go. You know, if you like this one, I would definitely recommend you check out the stories of Harry Schnitzel or Bonzo, sorry, Bonzo the Sad Crying. I've got a few Call of Cthulhu story times, which are definitely worth checking out. So if it's something you're interested in, if you enjoyed this one, definitely go ahead and check them ones out after the video. And of course, I'll see you in the next one.